Hey guys, I'm Zach Heidi, and today I'm going to be reviewing Embertone's Herring Clarinet. Right after this motorcycle drives by. Okay, so before I start, uh, this is not a paid sponsorship from Embertone. I was looking for a new clarinet, did some web shopping, and when I found this one, I was just blown away by the audio demos. I had to try it out for myself, and having gotten it, I am so amazed by it. It's extremely user-friendly, it's fun to play, Anything that I was worried about when I initially played the software, my fears were resolved because they have lots of customizable menu options. So I'm going to go over all of the menus, the features that it has, any key switching, and we're going to play around with it a little bit. So this is our first menu when we open it up. We have four controllable MIDI parameters here. We've got dynamics, vibrato, flutter, which is short for flutter tongue, and multi, which is short for multiphonics. Now, Dynamics is usually controlled with a mod wheel, but in this case, Embertone made the mod wheel control vibrato. So if you're going to control Dynamics, you'll need a keyboard with an additional knob or fader or slider. Embertone also has a software that's available for iPhones and iPads that will give you control over all these uh, via the touchscreen. So to control it with a keyboard, what you would do is right click here where it says Dynamics, Learn MIDI CC Automation, we click on that and then we'd move on our keyboard the knob or fader that we want to control it with. So let's hear all of these parameters separately. Here's dynamics. Really nice. You you don't hear any crossfading between these dynamic layers. I don't know how many layers they have, but it's enough to make it sound really realistic. Okay, now we also have vibrato here. Again, really great. No, uh, no strange crossfading of samples. Then we also have flutter tongue. and multiphonics. Really great. Now to make a realistic performance of a virtual instrument, these parameters would be used in conjunction with each other at the same time. So if you can play them at the same time, that just gives you a more realistic performance, something like this. If you can't, all you need to do is just record in here. I'll give you an example. You can record with one parameter going. And then simply record the other parameter. And you'll see that they'll record right on top of each other. This is the volume. This is vibrato. Now they also included a reverb in here. It's a really nice sounding reverb. I'm gonna turn off mine so you can hear it. Really warm sounding. And they have round robin as well. So if you have multiple repeated notes like this, to avoid triggering the same sample, you click round robin and you'll hear it's alternating between different samples. Now let's go into key switching. We have the one that's currently set, which is legato slur. Now if we have C sharp held, we'll get tongued notes. You can also trigger this by holding down the damper pedal. Next we have shorts. D sharp will get us uh, semitone trills. E will get us whole tone trills. Then on the top with these two blue icons we have, the F is just ensuring that we have legato mode, which is one instrument playing, 
one note at a time. And then the F sharp will allow us to play multiple notes at the same time. Now we'll lose the legato effect if we have uh, polyphonic mode. So I'd suggest if you wanna have writing for multiple instruments, just duplicate the track and perform them all in legato mode, playing each of their own parts. So that's it for this menu. Now we're gonna go into the other two menus that Embertone has here. We've got Ensemble. This is a really, really cool feature. So if we wanna have multiple players playing the same melody line, if we were gonna duplicate the tracks here and have them all playing in unison, we would get phasing. And that's because they're all triggering the same samples at the same time. And when you do that, you actually get cancellation. Uh, so you lose some elements of the audio. So to prevent that, what we're gonna do is we'll click ensemble here. It says solo, we'll click that, it turns into ensemble. This will determine how many players we wanna have playing. So if I turn all this off, now we only have one player and he'll be on the right. Turn this on. I gotta turn on legato mode again. There we go. And you can have up to six. Here's what six players sounds like. Really, really cool. Now over here, you can do some fun stuff. We can turn on, bump this up, bump up pitch or timing, and that'll give us a little bit less accuracy. So if you ever want them to sound like a middle school band, there you go. And then lastly, we have this menu here, which is for more configuration of the software. If you wanna have different keys for key switching, you can do that here. You can change things like the vibrato speed, the type of vibrato. You can change the color scheme if you want red or black and white. And then what I think is most important about this menu is this here, the lag. So when I first got the software, I think it was plugged just at zero. And what I noticed is when I was playing with a click, I was falling pretty far behind. You can hear how this kind of some uh, push and pull from the instrument. And that's because when you have legato samples, the software needs to know what note you're gonna play next in order to determine what legato sample it's gonna trigger. So when you have it set here, it'll give you the most realistic legato. But the downside is you lose a lot of the accuracy and speed. On the other end, if this is set to 100 and I play, You hear I'm right on the beat, but we lose all the legato. So this knob actually gives you control to determine which setting you prefer most as a performer. I put it at 30 because I feel like I still get a lot of accuracy, but I also get a lot of the legato samples, which I love. So that's a great feature they had in here. If I had one piece of constructive criticism for the whole software, it would be really nice if it had mic placements so that you could place the clarinet farther back in the room. But it's such a minor thing because you can do the same kind of effect with a, a bus, just sending it to a convolution reverb. And the reverb that they have built in sounds really nice and kind of puts it deeper in the space too. So that's it for this review. Like I said, I think it's a fantastic instrument. It's one of the most fun virtual instruments to play that I have in my arsenal. Uh, it sounds incredibly realistic, and it's a reasonable price. I think they currently have it on Embertone for 99 bucks. It's a great deal. They're a really, really fun company. They do lots of cool stuff each month, uh, like April Fool's pranks and Thanksgiving things. I think they released a, a turkey VST last year. So they're a great company, and they deserve the support. Thanks for sticking around. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.